How are you there sa mga nanonood now? Still live, we have 28 participants. How are you all holding up? Thank you sa pagpunta for this year's year-end event. Spread the word, be part, and be proud. Now, sulit ang pagpunta nyo because we still have another part of this uh, year-end event. Meron tayong virtual tour. But before that, we will also have, uh, we will hear some words from our speakers. We have two guest speakers for uh, today's event. No? First is an alumnus of Technological Institute of the Philippines. He has 10 years of experience in adhesive technology. He is now currently the quality manager of Henkel Polybit, Ms. Engineer Franklin Tambot. The other speaker is an alumnus of St. Louis University, which has an extensive experience in polymer and adhesive uh, industry and is currently the technical manager of FIFA Chemicals, Engineer Benedict Madariaga. So ayan, we will be having our virtual tour and we will hear some uh, uh, the knowledge behind this uh, tour, plant tour, the adhesive and uh, polymer manufacturing. So let us welcome Engineer Franklin and Engineer Benedict. Are you there, guys? Hello. Uh, nakikita niyo po kami? We can see the screen, the PowerPoint screen. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, guys. Uh, so, uh, nandito kami ngayon ni Frank para mag-discuss tungkol sa aming mga products, which is, we will be uh, tackling actually two products. Uh, although yung title namin is adhesive, adhesive and coating sealants. Actually, adhesive sealants and coatings. So mali lang yung title, title namin. And uh, we will be uh, showing you after this presentation, a uh, factory, which is also our uh, virtual plant tour. So let's start. Okay. First, first not i handle natin, i discuss natin our uh, contact adhesive. So, kung alam niyo yung contact adhesive, this is basically an adhesive which is uh, around that. Uh, 20 to 30 percent solids composing rubbers, uh, resins, and other additives, and the rest is solvents. So, ipapakita natin mamaya kung ano yung mga basic ingredients and how we mix the uh, product and ano yung mga equipment na ginagamit natin. So, what is a solvent based contact adhesive? So nakikita niyo diyan, uh, meron diyan po tayong uh, for example Patex which is from uh, Henkel. Rugby, yan yung famous na rugby sa atin sa <laughs> Philippines which is uh, medyo nagagamit siya for some addiction because of the uh, solvent content na uh, addictive and that is toluene. Uh, we will discuss later on kung ano yung mga other alternatives of solvents para hindi para maging toluene free siya. And some famous brand in Saudi which is you can see their tropic brand. So the technology is they are made of natural rubbers which are uh, basically polychloroprene. So polychloroprene yung kanyang pinaka base material and they must be applied to both surfaces and allowed some time to dry before the two surfaces and are pressed together. Once the surfaces are pushed together, the band forms very quickly. Hence, it's usually not necessary to apply pressure for a long time. So there is no need to use clamps. So kaya ang tawag niya is contact adhesive dahil evaporate mo yung kanyang solvent and mag mag-create siya ng adhesion or we call it tackiness. Now, yung tackiness na yun, before mawala yung totally mag-dry yung tackiness niya, then that's the time na i-put i in contact mo yung dalawang surface na may applied ng glue. Now, contact adhesive, 
as a background, contact adhesive are the most known solvent-based adhesive. So lahat yan, uh, lahat ng mga carpentries, uh, construction, they are using this kind of glue. Even yung mga shoe manufacturers, leather, leather manufacturers. So ang contact adhesive is very uh, versatile in terms of application. So it is a natural rubber. Was the first? Uh, it was uh, a first. The uh, first na contact adhesive was a natural rubber, na extracted from a tree, and then later on, uh, uh, nagsintesize sila, which created the polychloroprene. Now, uh, what are the applications of uh, this? So, meron siyang pang footwear, automotive, building and construction, furniture, and do it yourself. So, do it yourself. Ito yung mga nabibili mo normally sa mga hardwares. So, ito yung pwede mong gamitin kahit saan-saan. Sa bahay or sa construction and everywhere. Now, the beauty about contact adhesive, you can uh, use it as a, uh, uh, in terms of application by brushing, by spray, by roller, or just minsan binubuhos na lang. So, that is the curtain coating, which is pag binuhos na lang na ganyan, patutuluin mo na lang and then spread mo lang konti, wait for it to dry uh, a bit and then uh, pwede mo na siyang gamitin as i i you put in contact with the uh, uh, substrate. So, application properties. So, meron tayong basic na adhesive. Like I said, it is solvent-based. Uh, normally, yung solvent-based natin is composed of uh, 75 percent uh, solvent and the rest will be rubber and resin you just let it dry para ma evaporate yung uh, initial solvents mo and then you can use it in many uh, substrate like uh, polystyrene foam metal wood plastic carpet even uh, a pur or pir which is yun yung nandyan sa picture which is polyisocyanurate Ginagamit yan, especially in Middle East, for insulation, uh, HVACs, or refrigerators, or AC. Now, what are the types of contact adhesive? So, marami yan. Pero I will discuss three types, which is the, there are three, CR, SBS, and SBR. Yung CR is chloroprene rubber. Yung number two is SBS or styrene, butadiene styrene. And lastly is SBR, which is styrene butadiene rubber, which is a modified version of SBS, uh, mas maraming uh, butyl, which is a little bit more tacky. Now, product uses goes to lamination, foam to foam, upholstery, air conditioning and refrigeration, uh, HVAC, PIR construction, and many other industries. So industries like shoe manufacturing, leather industries like bags, uh, shoes as well. Now, one example of uh, application that is well known here in UAE is dahil, or Middle East, is dahil mainit is ginagamit nila ito for assembly of HVAC. Yun yung dinadaanan ng hangin for uh, air conditioners and uh, uh, mga cold and hot air so before matap uh, before uh, i-assemble tong mga edge pack na to is normally yung mga joints ginagamit lang is contact adhesive and uh, it is more on the SBS uh, technology now meron din tayong insulation which is yung fiber wool na ginagamit din para i-insulate mo yung mga edge pack this is a fiberglass wool na para siyang foam and it doesn't really require a strong adhesion as long as meron siyang tackiness. So ang ginagamit dito is SBR na hindi nawawala yung tackiness niya or yung adhesion niya even for days. So nandun lang yung tackiness niya pero hindi yung in terms of adhesion hindi siya comparable sa CR or chloroprene rubber. Now, meron din tayo nung mga ginagamit sa waterproofing. 
na which is yung CR base, EPDM. So very strong na contact adhesive. Uh, it can reach, it can tolerate up to 170 degrees Celsius. And uh, it is used in, uh, in uh, a lot of uh, Middle East areas dahil uh, mainit yung panahon dito, it can reach up to 60 degrees Celsius sa mga roof, roofing ng uh, mga bahay and mga establishments, buildings. And spray adhesive, this is another uh, contact adhesive na ginagamit sa upholstery and it is a fast uh, crystallizing adhesive. Ibig sabihin, uh, natutuyo siya agad and then it can uh, generate immediate adhesion sa mga application. Nagagamit ito sa mga furniture industries, even yung mga car manufacturers para sa mga insulations, mga coverings ng mga upuan, mga roof ng mga cars. So, this is another option na uh, pwede natin gawin based on the solvent-based adhesive. Okay, <clears throat> let us go into the uh, basic raw materials of the contact adhesive. So, medyo interesting to dahil dito natin malalaman kung ano yung mga raw materials. Now, we'll go into the uh, polychloroprene rubber. So, ito yung ito yung pinaka raw material yung tinatawag nating rugby. So, rugby uh, is a well-known brand from Bostik. So it is actually a brand. Ngayon sa Pilipinas naging uh, sikat ang rugby dahil you know rugby is just a sports na gumagamit ng bola and they use rugby as uh, dahil rubber siya para ma-assemble daw yung bola ng rugby and then they call the brand rugby. So yun yung pinaka history ng rugby na brand. Pero actually a rugby is a brand from uh, Bostik. So, how do we make adhesive? Pa First of all, i-discuss ko kung paano tayo nag-create ng rubber. So, ang rubber natin starts with polymerization of, uh, of polymers. So, water-based siya initially. Uh, and then, uh, we, uh, we make latex out of that. And then, uh, dinedehydrate natin yung product. So we evaporate all the moisture and then we crystallize it and form it into a chips, rubber chips. So from there, hindi mo na siya madissolve ng water once na na-dry na siya. So you have to use solvent to dissolve the material. So from the stage one of reaction, water-based pa lang siya. Nag-cross-link yung mga polymers mo. And then at the end, it becomes a irreversible uh, uh, material in terms of a waterborne system. So from water uh, waterborne or water-based material, it becomes a solvent-based material. So yan po yung uh, nature ng ating latex. So uh, example of uh, vessels which makes uh, latex are itong mga vessels po na yan. So reactor vessels yan. And it can also be used as a uh, uh, mixer for your solvent-based contact adhesive later on. So makikita nyo yung mga sample of mixers mamaya pag mag tayo. Okay? So basic production of contact adhesive. Number one is, yung R is actually rubber. Uh, we mix the solvent with rubber and resins. So, ide dissolve muna natin yung rubber and resins. Then, we stabilize the product with magnesium oxide, zinc oxide, and antioxidant. So, what is magnesium oxide? Magnesium oxide is actually the material that reacts the rubber and resin. And resin is a form of phenolic resin, alkyl phenolic resin. So without the magnesium oxide, hindi mo siya mag, hindi magkakaroon ng stable product. Now what is the zinc oxide? Ang zinc oxide naman is the acid scavenger. So dahil uh, chlorinated rubber yan, 
magkakaroon ka ng mga uh, uh, other products which is acids like in the form of uh, HCl. So lagyan mo ng zinc oxide so that magkakaroon ka ng acid uh, absorption ng acid. Hindi hindi siya acid, hindi acidic yung product mo. Uh, especially pag naka-empake siya sa mga uh, tin metal uh, packaging like cans, magkaka magkakaroon siya ng corrosion. Yun ang dapat na iwasan natin. And lastly is antioxidant para stable siya sa mainit or uh, mamimaintain mo yung viscosity niya for at least uh, two years. Now, the processing of such an adhesive, depending yung, depende yung uh, configuration ng mixer mo, uh, a minimum of four hours is required, up to eight hours. Now, the whole process, including charging and everything, will take around 14 to 18 hours of production. So, medyo mahaba ang production ng chloroprene rubber. Unlike yung mga other technologies na minention ko kanina, like uh, styrenated rubber and uh, NSBR. Okay? Now, selection of rubber is very important in making a contact adhesive. So, gusto mo bang mabilis siya maging na adhesive or gusto mo siyang matagal na mag magkaroon ng adhesion? Uh, now, Pag may mga industries na ang ginagamit nila is uh, fast crystallization, ang ibig sabihin nun, pagka-apply nila kaagad ng adhesive, gusto nila kaagad na i-attach yung panel. And this is more on a fast phase application. Pagpupunta ka naman sa industry, industries na gusto nilang mahaba yung process, like they will apply adhesive to all the panels or all the substrate, and after an hour, Doon sila babalik para i-attach yung mga, i-assemble yung kanilang panels. Then they require a slow crystallization adhesive. So, nasa, depende sa customer mo kung ano yung preference nila. So, in a, in a bigger picture of contact adhesive, we are not just making a one grade of adhesive, contact adhesive, but we are making several grades to cater different type of industries. So, for example, if you go for a shoe industry, it takes time for them to assemble the shoes kasi dumadaan yan sa conveyor. Uh, ang preference nila is one hour na crystallization. Pagpupunta ka naman sa mga upholsteries or carpentries, ang gusto nila is 10 minutes lang kasi pagka-apply nila, ilatag nila kaagad yung kanilang carpet or panels and then aalis na sila going into the next uh, phase of the project. Now, selection of solvent is also critical in formulating adhesive. So these are just few of the solvents na nagagamit sa mga contact adhesive. And if you look into the, uh, the uh, list, nandyan pa rin yung toluene, acetone, and basically, yan yung mga mostly product na nagagamit for contact adhesive. And then, pag marami na yung, uh, ibig ko sabihin, pag may customer ka na gusto na marami ang toluin, ibig sabihin gusto nila na medyo mas mahaba yung open time. May customer naman na ang preference nila is acetone, ibig sabihin may exceed yung open time. So, yan yung mga dyan ka uh, 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 magfo-formulate ng uh, curing time ng yung adhesive based on yung uh, uh, requirement ng customer mo sa open time. Now, one thing that you also have to consider is yung solubility ng rubber mo sa selections mo ng solvent. This is something na very important. Okay? So, application of different contact adhesive, saan ba yan nagagamit? So, there's no single system or for classifying adhesive. Ibig sabihin, meron kang isang ginawang adhesive, pwedeng gagamitin yan sa marami, depende sa mga uh, end of use, uh, raw material availability, physical form, and customer preferences. So, for example, pag ang uh, isang customer mo, uh, 
uh, kailangan nila ng isang product na low smell, low odor, pero mabagal, uh, mabagal ang open time, hindi mo pa rin pwedeng gamitin ng acetone. So, nasa formulators nyo yan, uh, nasa selection of rubbers. It is, uh, it is not, paano natin sabihin, hindi siya madaling uh, i-formulate or mag-formulate ng isang product lang para sa lahat ng customers mo. Although, ang kailangan na gawin ng uh, manufacturer ng adhesive is they really have to strategize adhesive formulation na at least nasa titignan mo yung mid-range of glue uh, glue specification para maka-cover ka ng wider customer range sa mga different categories of application. Although hindi mo ma-avoid talaga yung mag-formulate ka for other uh, customers. Now, in terms of technical know-how on making an adhesive, there are only three areas na tinitingnan natin. Yung strength of adhesion, yung tack, ito yung lagkit, and then yung shear. Ito yung Ibig sabihin yung uh, lakas ng adhesion mo in terms of uh, movement. Pag once na nag-attach uh, na yung uh, surface mo, uh, assembly mo, ano yung lakas niya para ma-resist ang shear? So lahat yan, tinitingnan namin sa pag-formulate ng adhesive. So meron tayong R&D and QC na every time gumawa tayo ng adhesive, ine-evaluate lahat tung tatlo na yon addition, tackiness, and shear. Yung tackiness is something na important dahil doon na may measure ng customer kung yung initial tack mo is kaya na niyang hawakan or i-grab yung surface mo until you have to wait for it to dry or cure. Now, addition and cohesion is something na na a mini measure namin as a formulator for adhesive. Ang alam lang natin lagi is adhesion. Pero cohesion is something na mini measure natin yung strength ng adhesive itself. Yung adhesion is adhesive to the surface. Yung cohesion is yung strength of yung adhesive kung kailan siya mapupunit or kailan siya mag-give way. So pag may dalawa kang surface, nag-apply ka ng glue dyan, Pag totally nawala yung glue mo dun sa surface ng uh, nilagyan mo ng pandikit, mahina ang adhesion. Pero kung hinatak mo yung dalawang no, medyo nakat ata yung line ni Engineer Benedict. Na cut ba? Okay na. Okay na Doms. Can you hear us? Hello? Yes? Yes, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So going back sa adhesion and cohesion. So yan yung, yung adhesion is yan yung uh, minimeasure natin yung lakas ng glue na, mag, uh, na dumikit dun sa surface ng ina-applyan mo. Cohesion naman is yung lakas ng glue mo para i-resist yung dalawang material. So... Uh, whenever formulating adhesive, kung may meron kang dalawang surface which represents yung orange at saka yellow, yung blue is adhesive, is tinitingnan natin kung ano yung penetration niya. So viscosity is there, uh, size of yung particles ng adhesive mo, and uh, paano, yung, paano mo ma-fill yung gap ng mga porous, uh, porosity ng substrate mo. So, kung once na yung product mo nag-give way siya dito sa area ng uh, uh, nag-give way siya dun sa in-between ng substrate and yung adhesive, it means mahina yung adhesion mo. Pag nag-give way naman siya sa gitna ng adhesive, mahina yung cohesion mo. Okay? So, paano ka pipili kung ano yung adhesive na gagamitin mo? So, you first identify kung ano yung ididikit mo, which is identify the substrate. Number two is specify the service requirement. Determine the assembly process. Review the adhesive options available. Select the adhesive and test the band. So 
part ng uh, supplier ng adhesive is we have to know ano ba yung process? Ano yung kailangan natin idikit? Ano gaano kabilis yung uh, movement or application ng ating pandikit? And then ano yung required na strength? Saan siya gagamitin? Gagamitin ba siya sa barko? Gagamitin ba siya sa sapatos? Or gagamitin lang sa papel? So lahat yan pinag-aaralan natin. So pag gagamitin sa, for example, sa carpentry, dapat matibay yan. Dahil inuupuan yan, dapat mati, matagal yung buhay niyan. Pero pag gagamitin lang sa papel, mas madaling mapunit yung papel. So it doesn't really require a strong adhesive. Okay? Now, knowing the substrate is makikita nyo doon from, uh, uh, ito yung mga tinitignan natin na mga almost lahat ng substrate covered na dito. What type of paper, what type of glass, textile ba siya, ceramic, metal, wood, rubber, or concrete. So, depende kung ano yung materials mo, ano yung compatibility ng adhesive mo, dun mo ifo-formulate. So, uh, inaalam namin kung ano yung substrate ng application. Okay. So, gaya nung diniscuss ko kanina, dapat dapat bang malaman kung smooth yung surface, porous, non-porous, flexible, rigid ba, or kailangan ba talagang manipis lang yung film. Uh, thin film, for example, yung packaging natin ng chips. Packaging natin ng chips is napaka-flexible, napaka-nipis, di nyo alam na yung palang uh, chips film nyo is actually a composition of two or three films. Sobrang nipis niya, hindi niyo nakikita yung adhes uh, adhesion or lamination ng mga mga uh, mga pandikit natin na yun, pero may glue in between the films. Okay? Customer requirement, yan yung odor, color, thickness, or, uh, or minsan ang tawag natin dyan is viscosity, open time. So, do they have the specs? We always ask the specification required by the customers. Ano yung ginagamit nila ngayon? So, gumagamit ba sila ng Henkel or BSF or Dow or maraming, maraming brands from big companies. So, lahat yan, uh, pinag-aaralan natin bago tayo mag-recommend ng glue. If we have a companies like uh, big brands like uh, BASF, like Dow, like Henkel, like uh, HP Fuller, uh, we have to know what kind of, uh, what are the specification, what type of chemistry they are using before we can offer our own product and formulate our own product. Uh, adhesive is very wide in terms of grades of adhesive. So, uh, isa yan sa mga technology na hindi mawawala or hindi uh, hindi mama ano yung tawag doon hindi siya maluluma dahil even the oldest technology of adhesive which is starch based nandiyan pa rin animal glue nandiyan pa rin so yan yung mga adhesive na nakita pa nila na discover pa nila noong unang panahon okay so ito ito rin yung diniscuss ko kanina what are the uh, specification na kailangan ng customer for formulating an adhesive okay specific adhesion the ability uh, the ability to stick a substrate the ability to form a strong bond to the substrate so can solvent evaporate will the solvent react to the substrate will the adhesive adhere to the substrate so Hindi ka lang basta magbibigay ng glue. For example, toluene can react to your styrofoam. So ano ba ta, dapat ang kaila, kung styrofoam ang kailangan mong idikit? Hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng rugby kasi yung rugby, ididissolve niya yung styrofoam mo. So gagamit ka ng solvent na hindi magre-react sa styrofoam. Which sometimes in a form of uh, aliphatic or dalawang solvent natin, one aromatic and one aliphatic. So, yan yung mga tinitignan natin as a formulator. So, ito po yung pinakita ko rin kanina. Once na nag-evaporate na yung solvent mo, uh, ito yung, mga, yung black na, na lines mo, curly, curly black lines, are, these are the polymers. 
and the yellow are in the form, yan yung mga solvent natin. Pag once na nag-evaporate na yung solvent natin, nag interlock yung ating mga polymers and yan nagka, dyan nagkakaroon ng strong adhesion. Okay, viscosity is the flow of uh, material. So, uh, I expect na lahat naman tayo, alam natin yung viscosity. Wetting out is the ability of your glue na ma-apply ma mo dun sa substrate, either porous or um, uh, glossy substrate. So, lahat yan, pinag-aaralan natin, kinoconsider natin yan. Okay, open time. Yan yung, dyan, dyan uh, nagpa-play role yung ating crystallization and the type of solvent na gagamitin natin. Kailangan ba mabilis yung open, open time natin or mabagal. So open time, once na nilagyan mo ng, ng glue yung dalawang surface, uh, ilang minutes yung, uh, yung required para i-allow mo to dry before i-put in contact mo yung dalawang surface. Okay, bonding process, ito po yung mga example ng mga uh, paraan para i-press mo yung dalawang surface. Yung iba gumagamit ng mga clamp, mechanical clamps para pagdikitin yung mga substrate mo. Uh, itong chart na to na nasa baba is ano yung pressure na i-apply mo. Siyempre, mas, ma mas mataas yung pressure, mas maganda yung dikit, mas maiksi rin yung required na open time. Uh, in this chart, it shows na, the, na mas mabigat yung pressure na, na ipipress mo dun sa dalawang substrate, mas mataas yung maaabot mong uh, strength ng adhesion. So habang tumataas yung uh, pressure mo sa pag-press ng dalawa mong surface, tumataas din yung peel strength or yung lakas ng adhesion mo dun sa sa applications mo. Okay? Uh, and the, ito yung uh, basically chart para i, ipakita natin kung ano yung uh, stages of yung contact adhesive natin. First, na, in this side, itong uh, vertical line natin na to, ano ba yung vertical pataas? Okay, oh, vertical okay. line natin represents yung uh, band strength and yung sa baba naman represents yung time. It could be in minutes or in hours. Now, first is wala, kang, wala ka pang adhesion sa material if the adhesive is still containing the solvent. Zero yan. As in wala kang mafeel na adhesion. So once nag-dry na yung uh, solvent mo, uh, eventually mag-create ka na ng adhesion strength. Now, up to the point na na-attain mo na yung uh, uh, evaporation ng solvent mo, hindi na yung tataas ang band strength mo. So at this point, pwede mo nang pagdikitin yung dalawang surface mo kahit maging uh, uh, pag tumagal na yan, once tumagal na yan, yan na yung adhesion strength niya. May makikita kayo dito sa taas na another line na from the red line dito na nag-plateau, bigla siyang tumaas at saka uh, to, uh, nag-contribute sa strength ng addition mo. That is, when we have a contact adhesive, la, dadagdagan natin siya ng cross-linkers in a form of isocyanide or hardeners or catalyst na i-improve pa yung cross-linking ng iyong adhesive. So, ito yung uh, nagiging two component yung glue mo. Hindi na siya, kahit lagyan mo ng solvent, hindi na yan madidissolve. Itong glue mo na to, itong red line, kahit natuyo na yan, pag nilagyan mo ng solvent yan, madidissolve ulit yan. Pero kung ni Krinos link mo, kahit lagyan mo ng solvent, hindi na siya magbre-break. So normally, ginagamit to sa mga shoe industries lalo na yung mga industrial uh, safety shoes dahil exposed sa mga petroleum, mga petrochemicals, solvents. So they have to use uh, catalyst or cross-linking agents. Okay? So yan ulit yung pressing. 
So actual handling and testing of contact adhesive. So normally, ang chinecheck lang natin dito is uh, naghang tayo. Yan. Viscosity, critical yan. Uh, lalo pag spray adhesive, kailangang mababang mababa. Around 100 CPS. Pag contact adhesive naman na yung mga ginagamit natin like rugby, it's around 2,000 CPS. So meron kang different spindles para ma-measure mo yung viscosity natin. If you are using a very low viscosity, gagamitin mo yung 1. And a very high viscosity, gagamitin mo yung spindle number 4. So meron kang form of band strength. Meron tayong tensile, shear, and cleavage, and pit. So yan yung mga, nandito yung... Uh, uh, illustration kung nasaan ia-apply yung stress ay yung uh, yung tense ay uh, yung stress para ma-measure mo yung failure ng iyong adhesive. So testing the adhesive we intend to measure kung kailan magfe-fail in a different uh, criteria. So yan po yung mga tinitingnan natin criteria. Okay? So ito pa yung mga ibang procedures para ma-measure natin yung glue. Meron tayong uh, minimeasure natin yung tack. So rolling ball method, rope tack, and then loop tack. So yan yung adhesion and shear test. So as a summary, how adhesive are used? Okay, creating a band, uh, creating optimal band, important cost, uh, customer concern kung ano yung kailangan ng customer and multiple multiple ways to describe adhesives adhesive comes in a wide variety of forms so uh, marami pong tinitignan sa adhesive as a manufacturer R&D and QC uh, hindi lang siya mag-formulate kami ng glue pag dumikit na siya sa kahoy okay na ibenta para sa lahat so tinitingnan natin kung ano yung kailangan ng customers. Is it fast? Is it slow? Kailangan ba ng uh, strong addition? Kailangan ba ng weak ad addition? Compatible ba yung solvent mo dun sa gagamitan mo ng uh, application? So lahat po yan tinitingnan natin. So uh, for question and answers, uh, pwede nating entertain after ni uh, Mr. Frank. Okay. okay. James, 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 Yes, good afternoon po sa lahat. Uh, as uh, engineer Ben uh, Benedict, uh, summary sa kanyang, ano, sa kanyang, uh, technical uh, information. So, basically, sa adhesive, unang-una, <clears throat> alam natin yung, ano, yung, yung requirement ng ating customers, design ng adhesive, mga parameters na tinetest, at saka yung field of application. So, basically, ang adhesive kasi napaka-wide. Maraming uh, factors or maraming um, uh, application method na, na ginagamit or iba't ibang iba't ibang klase ng adhesive na na products. Okay, so in continuation for that uh, discussion, so ang 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 subject ko naman is the water-based coating. So here so water based we, we, we have that uh, CRRCS na kung tawagin ay cool solution for color inter interiors all the cool uh, reflective uh, roof coatings So in this report uh, everyone agrees that we need to operate more uh, sustainability bucket Unang-una, uh, sa, sa roof coating, 
initially ang ang purpose natin dito is to uh, uh, reduce global warming at the same time makakalesen tayo sa electricity consumption okay so we have here reducing the global warming and uh, finding ways of managing energy and resources more uh, intelligently are our priorities improve uh, living uh, standards and the target of uh, most government worldwide because uh, nowadays mostly mga mga concrete na yung mga building natin mostly especially in cities na kung saan lahat ng mga ng roof are made by uh, concrete so okay yes if you see in the, we have this data analysis uh, or urban for example this urban uh, heat island effect kung makikita nyo uh, based uh, data from uh, temperatures so in rural areas makikita nyo may mga trees doon compared to cities or downtown na kung saan walang walang mga trees na tumutulong or nag-absorb ng heat uh, thermal thermal uh, energies so, mostly, uh, like what I said, uh, we are in cities, especially here in UAE, mostly nung, nung mga buildings dito. Uh, at saka walang ano dito, <laughs> dito walang trees. So, mainit, mainit dito sa, sa, ano, sa Middle East. So, Exposed to the damaging effect of uh, sunlight and uh, UV radiation, uh, pressing to cycles, uh, water ingression, mechanical strain, setting and other building movements. Una una ang ang bakit ba natin kailangan ng ano ng ng roof coating? Basically, kasi meron tayong concrete. One factor is that to extend yung ano yung yung shelf life niya. That's why we need to coat it. At the same time, nag nag ano nagsi-save tayo ng energy in the sense na may mga elect electricity consumption, air conditioning, especially here in Middle East na napakainit. So nowadays, uh, lahat ng ng construction na uh, industries dito or sa mga application, lahat ng lahat ng roof ng 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 ano nila, ng roof nila, meron siyang ano roof coating. Which uh, uh, from from Henkel point of view, la, may, we have the product for different kind of uh, roof or uh, different kind of application na ginagamit natin, uh, available product namin na uh, coatings. At the same time, uh, with the uh, engineer Benedict, based based dun sa ano niya, sa diniskas niya earlier, na based sa design at saka customer requirement, nagde-develop kami ng mga materialis na uh, magwa-work dun sa uh, requirement ng customer. So, these are the, the basic uh, uh, technical things. Uh, for example, uh, for uh, today's main uh, resources challenge in roof technology is it transmitted from roof to building interiors kung kung uh, ma-observe niyo i mean uh, kung ay tatanong niyo dito sa for example if i said na dito sa middle east maraming ano maraming uh, gumagawa ng roof coating depends sa sa requirement or sa mga application we have lots of competitors na gumagawa din ng katulad nung ano namin nung nung product namin dito. So from roof surface convert to much direct sunlight into heat, it's transferred into the uh, to the inside of buildings, building become hot and uncomfortable, more energy consumption by air conditioning. Yan yung mga uh, ini-eliminate natin, but kailangan nating ng ano ng mag, mag apply ng roof coating sa mga uh, concrete surface. At the same time, uh, most significant single contribution to the reduction of uh, CO2 motion is the reduction of energy use control to internal temperature of buildings. Kasi dito sa Middle East, puro buildings yung nandito. Okay. 
basic technical uh, data yan this uh, solar radiation baka dito pinapakita yung ano yung 100% non solar energy is visible on uh, near the infrared range kumbaga dinedetect nila dito yung ayun uh, yung quantity ng ano ng energy na nanggaling sa ating solar system Okay. Yeah. Okay. Another topic is the, the basic behind this uh, reflectivity and emissivity. Uh, dito meron tayong uh, uh, two details. I did a code for row. Ang uh, reflectance, 100% emissivity. Ano ba yung reflectance? Ito yung, uh, yung light na magpapas to the surface. Kumbaga magbabounce back. So, uh, based sa type ng, ano, ng rough coating, meron tayo below ito yung mga details for regarding the white cold roof the black roof or sinasabi ng uh, bitumen so bitumen tsaka yung uh, metal uh, surface roof okay so based on the data below uh, at white cold roof is uh, reflectance is 88 percentage emissivity is 90 percentage so black roof naman ang reflectance ng ano niya is 5 to 10 percentage emissivity 90 percentage and the uh, metal roof surface, ang the reflectance is 90 percentage. Emissivity is 15 to 22 percentage. Okay. So reflectivity, uh, go back. Ang, ano, ang, if you see in the uh, photos, Ang SR is the surface le reflectance means uh, temperature. It should show ng temperature na concrete na walang uh, roof coating at saka nung may uh, coating. So there was a significant uh, variation compared to the temperatures. Okay. Okay, so... Additional uh, additional information. If you see, ito yung ito yung uh, sample ng uh, may, uh, roof na may coating at saka yung walang coating. Okay. Okay. So uh, if you see in the photos below or in, in the new screen, ito yung, ano, yung uh, application ng mga coatings. So the uh, very important things na kailangan gawin uh, during the application, dapat yung surface ay um, uh, walang, ano, walang mga foreign particles, dirt, at saka yung concrete itself, it should be... Uh, uh, matured enough to apply. For example, if the concrete has been 28 days curing. At the same time, una, ang pinaka-critical part dito is yung tao na mag apply Basically, kasi most of the quality issues we encountered for, uh, based on my experience na when they called up and then they uh, say that there was a quality issue with the product, once na pumunta kami sa site, nakikita namin na walang ano walang issue sa sa ano sa sa product the thing is yung applicators lack of uh, experience they did not follow the proper procedure or the standard procedure for application they did not follow the correct uh, guidance sa pag -prepare, preparation pa lang ng ano ng ng preparation ng substrate at the same time yung proper coat uh, priming ng substrate bago siya Yep, bago i-apply yung ano yung ating waterproofing. So as per the discussion as the uh, engineer Ben yung mga uh, as design the basically uh, ito yung ano typical formulation sa CRRCS so pigment 9 percentage we have the filler is 40 percentage 
binder uh, maybe as about 52 percentage uh, minsan it depends sa product kung ang ang ginagawa mo design kasi kung ano yung ano yung yung required ng ano ng customer so sometimes yung yung formulation ina-adjust na lang based doon sa requirement niya at doon sa uh, yung how the product would work especially in the in the site Okay, uh, like, uh, like uh, engineer Ben discussed a while ago, ito yung mga high-speed high mixer na ginagamit during production sa production ng ano, adhesive coatings and uh, sealants. So, okay, so, so ito yung ano, comparison chart ng, ano, ng standard uh, NUD properties. So basically, that's uh, okay. Okay, conclusion. Call uh, reflective roof coating. It, ano ba yung ano yung uh, uh, binibigay niyang ano benefit? So reduces temperature in building. Nagkaroon siya ng thermal comfort. Reduces energy uh, com uh, consumption for cooling. Increased lifetime of roof. Like uh, what I said, for example, uh, meron kaming uh, uh, meron, meron kaming material na it should be long for 25 years and uh, definitely decrease the CO2 emotion. Don't offer toilet binders for CRCS. Uh, different substrate, different technologies of quick settings and uh, improved uh, properties. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. So So okay, yan po yung uh, presentation ni uh, Mr. Frank. Again, uh, what we've discussed is uh, a basic contact adhesive and then yung water-based na roof coating, which is also formulated uh, based on latex. So yung latex na ginagamit ni Frank Don is a product before uh, pag yan yung polymerized na latex, it is a waterborne. And pag nag-dry din yan, uh, irreversible na rin siya. So it is a perfect uh, material para gamitin siya sa coatings. So now the next part is we are going for the virtual tour. Yan po. So mag-visit na po tayo sa factory. I think uh, walang audio na naririnig. Can we start over again? Or kung pwede, uh, sabayan mahina ang audio volume. The video is up for a while. Sorry for that. Process? 
Okay, so nandito na tayo ngayon. Here in Coatings at SF and Sealand Factory. We are now here in Umaukoin. Uh, again, I am Ben and Frank. Frank. So uh, we will show you the factory here in Umaukoin. And this is the first time that we will be holding a virtual tour. Okay, tara. We are here now at the chiller area. So si Frank, ipapaliwanag sa atin kung paano itong chiller natin. Okay, ma meron tayo dito yung uh, uh, chiller for the process which is uh, kinokontrol nito yung uh, temperature produced uh, at 10 degrees at the same time uh, para ma makontrol yung yung ano yung yung temperature ng product during the process. And at the same time na na -pre prevent natin yung unwanted evaporation ng solvent. So in this area this is a uh, 500 gallons water na chilled water na meron na siyang insulated. So insulation is to prevent uh, yung uh, heating and to maintain yung cold water natin sa product. Let's go to the process. Okay, so nandito na tayo ngayon sa process area dito sa production. So we have here two mixers. And we will be using the during the production. So first... Frank will explain to you what is in this uh, bulletin board. Yeah, uh, first, uh, before the production is started, definitely we are starting and uh, take off with always the safety. So, here you can see that uh, there was a related kit is used during the process and then uh, need to be followed for the safety process. And then, uh, either the... Uh, yeah. So, we have here our uh, checklist para sa ating mga housekeeping, safety, and then preparation before and after batch. And then below, we have a chart here showing some information about our mixers. Kung ano yung capacity, ano yung mga auxiliaries na dapat i-connect natin, depending on the packaging na dapat gawin natin during production. So we have here drums, in paste, in gallons, and in small packaging. So we will show you uh, some of the parts na nandito. Number one is meron tayong direct filling, meron tayong mga host filling, pump, filters, and packaging lines. So we'll show the uh, accessories, Pam? Yes. Okay. Okay. So before we go to the production, I want to show you the basic safety. Now you see here a red marking where you are not allowed to put any materials and this is where your score clip should be parked. Now this yellow sign here or markings is to show visibility of the post and the opening of the gate in the mezzanine. So anywhere you will see a post showing you how to wear eyeglass uh, safety goggles to uh, prevent any solvent or raw materials that splatters or goes into your eyes. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, ito yung, ano, ito yung isang, uh, isang mixer, which is, ito yung process kung saan na uh, yung mga coatings, uh, pinaprocess. Kasi time itong uh, mixer na to, it has a capacity of uh, 6 uh, tons or 6,000 liters. Uh, ang, ang mixer, we already have this uh, chiller and that uh, jacketed uh, pipe na magpocontrol sa chilling ng, uh, ng product dun sa loob ng uh, mixer. Okay. Some of the auxiliaries na ipapakita namin sa inyo is uh, pump, filter, hose, and then we'll show you later the filling line. So, each 
tank has a different uh, outlet. Makikita niyo itong outlet na ito, it, it can be connected with a hose. Okay? The other is it can be directly filled with a product. Direct na yan. Pag open mo na yan, direct na sa packaging. Yung isa, pwedeng directly pupunta sa hose, pupunta dito sa pump. And then, we have here the filtering machine. So this is a fully automatic filtering machine na from pump, pupunta dito sa filter machine, and it goes to your packaging. So packaging, kung drums yan, direct na sa drum, pero kung small packaging, pupunta siya dun sa filling line. Okay, so ito po yung filling line. Yung filling line po natin is movable. So you can see a red marking here. It means na designated to filling line na to. If it is not used, if you can see, prevented siya for any uh, micro section na rin yung location niya. So pag may forklift or any traffic, hindi siya mababangga. Just in case na kailangan natin, i-move lang natin siya dito. Meron siyang installed with the wheels na nakala. And then we place it here, then we connect the pipings from the filter, and then the product goes here, and then automatic, ipipil na natin yung product. This will be run by pressurized air. So pwede siya ng gallons, and pwede siyang small packaging. Nandito kami ngayon sa production platform, kung saan namin ipapakita sa inyo yung machine and process. Ta? Uh, yeah, ito yung, ito yung mixer, uh, basically ito yung mixer na ginagamit ko dito production. Uh, Uno-una, bago sila mag-produce, kailangan yung operator at tray, may SOP na sinusunod, uh, may uh, standard batch card ng product na gagawin. Uh, just to ensure na walang uh, aberya o hindi magkakaproblema yung product during the process. So, basically ito yung mixer, meron siyang mga controller doon kung saan sineset yung Speed, RPM, and then after the mixing process, sinesit lang siya na ng, ng uh, set, uh, timer. For example, 20 to 30 minutes mixing, then after the mixing, it automatically sits off. So basically, ito yung, ito yung mga parameters na pinokontrol uh, during the process. And uh, one thing na, na pinapaalala natin sa mga operators natin, is always remember you emergency switch or stop switch. And any process na kailangan mo biglang isara, so this should always be accessible and visible. And one thing na dapat na, na nakalabel sa ating mga process, is especially sa mga magpakatabing controls, is dapat nakamention kung saan mixer yung controller mo. So nandito ngayon tayo sa mga small batch mixers or sometimes we call it pilot mixers or laboratory mixers. So we have two types of mixer, isa yung parang pang 10 kg lang and lower from uh, 1 liter up to 1 gallon, uh, or I mean 10 kg. And then ito naman yung ating pang 20 kg up to 30 kg. So both is controlled by a variable frequency drive. Uh, it has a... Uh, maximum speed of 1000 RPM. So dito natin minimix, it's either solvent based, water based, sealants, coatings. So ito, itong mixer na to is very flexible. So me and Frank, pag may gagawin kami mga experiments or laboratory uh, confirmation batch, dito namin gagawin before natin gawin sa scale up production. Okay na dito na kami ngayon sa laboratory. Uh, Frank will explain to you what are the laboratory equipments for adhesive and coatings. Uh, yeah, okay. From, uh, from production process, binibigyan nila or sinasubmit nila yung sample dito sa lab. At sa lab, tinetest namin yung required parameters. Kung ano yung, kung ano yung required na tinetest dun sa product, coating, sealant, or uh, adhesive. So, basically, may mga instrument tayo na ginagamit for testing. So, before namin i-test yung, yung product, nilalagay, ikinocondition muna namin yung required temperature. So, meron tayong uh, uh, temperature controller dito. And then, go back sa viscosity, meron tayong Krebs uh, stone viscometer. May mga different part ng uh, different kinds of viscometer, but related to this uh, 
product, ang ginagamit namin is the screen visometer to check the consistency and the thickness of the coatings. Here we have oven for uh, solid testing and the uh, stability test na ginagawa sa mga product. So, ito po, dito namin uh, ilalagay yung, ano, yung product for testing. So, isa, one equipment we have is that uh, grind finest na kung saan tinecheck namin yung uh, consistency nung, uh, nung coating, either may mga lumps o uh, undispersed particles ng mga color or the pigment. So, ito yung ginagamit namin. Mostly, ginagamit namin ng, ng, ng quantity and then... Oh. Okay. So, nami-measure natin yung microns, kung ilang microns yung ating mga powder. Normally, ibe-break mo yung powder. Pag once na na-achieve mo na yung uh, proper microns, it means na na-disperse na ng proper yung microns, ay yung powder. Number two is, meron naman tayo dito para i-measure natin yung brittleness ng coating. So, if you can see, magkaiba yung diameter ng rag. It means na, pag mas maliit yung diameter, and then hindi nag-break yung, uh, yung film mo, it is much more flexible. So, kung, i, kung ito naman at uh, uh, tines mo na dito, dito pa lang nag-break na, ibig sabihin, kapag finol mo na yung coating mo, uh, with, na naka-apply naka sa metal, pag finol mo na ganyan at nag-break, ibig sabihin, very brittle yung coatings mo. Number Number two also is, one thing also is, ito yung ating uh, uh, scratch adhesion test. So you have to, any coating, scratch mo lang na crosswise na ganyan. Then you will apply tape on top of the scratch part. Pag pinil off mo yung tape and then may sumama na, na coating, it means na doon mo measure or standardize yung adhesion ng coating mo. Normally, you do this with a standard and your samples so that may compare mo side by side yung adhesion ng standard coatings mo and then yung sample na ina-evaluate mo. So one thing that you have to remember when evaluating a sample with uh, comparing it to standard and, with, and a new sample is you have, you have to apply it uh, at the same time, same parameters and same thickness. And lastly, this is our gloss meter. This is used especially for coatings. Namin measure natin kung gano ka glossy ang ating mga coatings. So most specially, this is used for automotive coatings. So nakikita nyo, nandyan po yung sensor niya. So nag emit ng light and then magre-reflect back. The more, the more perfect yung reflection ng light natin, it means it has a better gloss. So ito po yung ating gloss meter. Okay, that is what we have in the lab and we'll show you some uh, samples of coatings na ating ina-evaluate. So ito yung mga examples ng ating mga coatings na ginagawa. So uh, meron tayong PU coat, meron tayong architectural coatings and meron din tayong mga PU screens. So like what we showed you in the production, lahat in, uh, in a certain mixer, isang mixer, babaguhin mo lang yung speed ng ating mixing and then magagawa mo na yung iba-ibang product. Normally, there are two types of product. Meron tayong solvent-based and meron tayong water-based. Now, in the lecture ni uh, Frank, na explain niya about roof coating, this, these are types of water-based na, na acrylic or uh, PU dispersion. And then for solvent-based naman, yun yung mga contact adhesive or example also is yung mga PU clear coat natin. So, ito yung mga examples ng mga coatings na pwede natin i-test using these equipments. And then, yung in-explain ni Frank, we have to make sure na tama yung viscosity, tama yung solids, tama yung density. And all of these parameters, we have to check during production, uh, especially dun sa final QC natin. So, gaya nung in-explain namin ni Frank, uh, factories like this are sometimes uh, hazardous, flammable, so we have to keep in mind safety uh, before doing any 
any process before letting other people uh, work in your company. Kailangan may orientation, training, and then as a management, dapat uh, implement mo lahat ang mga safety guidelines. Like what we showed you, we have charts, we have checklists, we have proper setup, and then this is why a company should invest in safety. After that, we go into the quality of the product, which is also important. Na dimiscuss kanina ni Frank. So, this is the end of the uh, virtual tour. Frank, yeah. thank you. Maraming salamat sa, pag, sa inyong pagdalo. At uh, hopefully, nabigyan, nabigyan namin kayo ng at least uh, brief uh, uh, details kung paano nagpo-produce ng uh, coating at ang mga process na ginagamit natin during the production. Salamat. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay. Ayan. Thank you, Sir Benedict and Sir Frank. We just witnessed an exclusive virtual plant tour in Umalquain here in UAE, uh, adhesive and coating uh, factory in Umalquain. Thank you so much, Northern Emirates, for uh, organizing that virtual plant tour. Now, we have to answer some questions. Currently, we have two questions from Engineer Florence. So this is the first question. With high chlorides concentration in the process, do you experience issue on the chlorine corrosion attack on your equipment? Aside from specifying the correct materials for construction, do you apply sacrificial coating on your equipment to mitigate the corrosion or is it minimized by mere addition of the zinc oxide in the process? Okay. Uh, basically, when we are considering Okay, basically when we are considering design of the uh, mixer, we have to look into the uh, resistance capability of the uh, uh, materials of construction. Number one that we are considering in uh, designing a mixer should be a uh, stainless steel uh, grade 316 and this will uh, help prevent rust in any uh, uh, material uh, in, uh, in mixing. So we are using both uh, water-based and high chlorine, uh, chlorine, uh, chloride content, chlorine content of the material. So uh, can you hear me? Yes, it's clear. Hello? Let's we'll continue in survey. Uh, okay. Now you can hear me? Yes, yes, it's clear. Okay. So, isa yan sa mga tinitignan namin. Uh, also, for the uh, finished good packaging, we have to consider the uh, packaging type. Uh, kung uh, epoxy coated ba siya? Or it, doesn't, or it doesn't really require any coating. Uh, one thing in designing your product, you also have to consider a stability testing with the packaging kung in long time, uh, let's say a year or two, uh, kung magrarast yung materials mo, uh, yung packaging mo with the materials. So sa inexplain ni uh, Frank kanina, we do evaluate product by accelerated aging. So meron tayong oven. Uh, we put it. Uh, we put the material inside the oven at a certain temperature, let's say 55 or 60 degrees Celsius, and a, a certain number of days, um, uh, ma calculate mo yung equivalent number of years. Mm -hmm. Makikita mo don kung nagraras yung product mo, and then you have to address it. If if uh, rusting is too much, then there's something wrong with the formulation. Uh, zinc oxide is just a uh, 
uh, material na makakapag uh, improve sa resistance ng rust mo pero there are some other materials na pwedeng mag-cause ng rusting. So to uh, prevent that, we have to consider good packaging. And in the designing of mixer, you have to consider the good material of uh, metals na gagamitin mo for construction of the mixer. Is that, uh, does that answer the question? I think it's clear, no? Okay. Uh, there's st uh, stability in your product, so maybe uh, you don't have that much problem with corrosion with your equipment. Yes, but uh, I do accept that there are some uh, materials that causes uh, corrosion in the packaging. So in case na nagkakaroon kami ng corrosion, we have to go back to our drawing boards, R&D, investigate all the raw materials. Uh, baka meron tayong... Uh, masyadong mataas ang acid content na raw materials, then we have to uh, to uh, neutralize it. So it does really happen sa industries ng adhesive and also coatings. Okay. Thank you, Sir Ben. Okay. Now this question is for Sir Frank. For a typical house installation here in UAE, what is the typical CO2 emission reduction of the said coating if it is applied? What is the typical payback period or cost-benefit ratio for using the roof coating that you just said earlier for a typical installation? So cost-wise. Hello? Did you hear my... They are reading the question again. Ah. For a typical house installation here in UAE, what is the typical CO2 emission reduction if the said coating is applied? Okay, and the typical uh, payback period for the cost for using the installation, the coating? Okay, uh, can I help in answering that question? Okay, uh, basically here in UAE, we have a certain uh, uh, standards uh, set by consultants. Now, yung uh, set standards na consultant na yun, which is also uh, regulated under DCL, uh, tinitignan natin yung emissions, emissions of uh, uh, CO2 and uh, yung emissions ng uh, ating uh, VOCs. Yun ang mga tinitignan natin. Uh, regular, uh, in terms of yung measures ng mga values na yun is uh, uh, we cannot really identify that based on yung products. But what we are really measuring mm -hmm. from our side when we do products is how much uh, energy is cost Energy is co uh, energy reduction is saved. I mean, when doing when installing a uh, a uh, insulation or uh, uh, roof coating, uh, improving the uh, I mean reflectance of UV and preventing heat from uh, uh, going through your uh, roofs. So you can reduce the uh, consumption of energy by. Uh, uh, saving from your AC, air conditioners. So yun yung mga nakikita naming benefits as of now. But in terms of CO2, most probably nasisave na yan through the use of kung meron ka namang consumption ng, uh, let's say, diesels because of using too much AC. Then doon siguro nagkakaroon tayo ng CO2 uh, uh, reduction. Pero directly sa ating uh, roof coating, I could say na energy cost ang ating nasa-save. Let's say if you are usually using uh, uh, eight hours of uh, AC per day and then na-reduce na mo to six hours lang, so meron ka na kaagad more than 3% na na-reduce dun sa, sa energy mo. 
based on yung consumption mo ng air conditioner. Other than that, uh, CO2 is uh, not really uh, measured in terms of yung coatings, uh, but more on yung energy saved dahil sa insulation na na-provide doon. Yeah. So, I hope uh, that helps. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Because sabi nga ni Sir Frank, uh, it just it is it's clear that it's indirectly contributing to reduce the global warming because they, yeah. maybe they're thinking uh, uh, because global warming is uh, associated with CO2 emission baka ma ma directly connect but indirectly nakakasip tayo with energy so yeah. by using this coating yeah. I, I good afternoon and thank you for that explanation actually I know that it's indirectly because uh, I think nobody can really measure on the CO2 emission or you can really, you can measure the CO2 emission, but mostly it is on the flaring part. But yeah, I totally understood the explanation that this is indirectly. What I'm asking here is what is the, poten the potential savings? How you co convince a customer to install that? What is a typical co uh, cost and benefit ratio? Yeah. When we apply the roof coating. So yeah. this is actually the main question. Okay. You. If you look back into the presentation which uh, uh, Frank showed a while ago, uh, anything na, na, uh, na insulated with a white reflective uh, coating uh, uh, provides a cooler... Uh, can I don't know if I can show the uh, presentation. Okay, anyhow... Uh, meron dun sa isang presentation which is you're having a 60 degree Celsius na without any insulation and the other one is 30 something degree Celsius with insulation and, and with this uh, justification you can somehow reduce uh, usage of your AC now in many cases like for example uh, a warehouse which requires uh, uh, cool temperature, uh, nami minimize natin yung usage ng air conditioning or cooling. And from there, uh, okay. Yung sa PowerPoint. Okay. When you go down, yung merong dalawang roof. I think you go down. Okay. I think you. No, 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 no. This one, this one. Okay. Okay. So here, you have the black roof coating and the white roof coating. So white roof coating is the product that we are trying to uh, to illustrate na meron kayo kaagad na savings na, na temperature from 43 up to 36. Now, any product na, na, na requires ng cooling or cool uh, weather condition is gagamitan natin ng white coating. As a result, mas konti yung energy na kailangan mo para palamigin yung warehouse mo or establishment or building. So, yan yung dahilan kung bakit we are saying that you can save energy or even, let's say, directly electricity from using your, gen, uh, your electricity. Most especially yung mga places na remote, which they are using uh, generators, then you can reduce the use of generators fuels. and fuels. So yun po yung indirect na, na result ng paggamit ng proper uh, roof coating. Sir, I totally get that. I totally understand the explanation a while ago regarding this technical possibility of mm -hmm. using the roof coating. What I'm asking perhaps is the monetary benefit. Okay. Ano po yung equivalent na, kasi pag sinabi natin na temperature, pag tayong mga technical, we can totally understand it. Oops. Yes. We reduce the Actually, we have conditioning. We have Pero pag sa po sa mga non-technical, of course, uh, they will always be asking for the bottom line, yung yes. gano'n ba kalaking dirhams yung masasave? Okay. Uh, 
what, what typical insulation you is a data of study na nangyari sa United States uh, uh, fr uh, Hilbert can you show the data after the uh, video yung video yeah yeah yung press yung powerpoint pa rin okay go down go down 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 yeah. okay yan so ito po yung mga studies na nagawa sa US we have several studies okay this is not from uh, from UAE alone but it came from uh, US na pinapakita po dito yung mga okay just a moment enlarge natin okay okay so yan yung yun pa ipapakita ko lang po yung mga samples ng mga data gathered natin okay so studies was were done in Greece Italy France and UK and this one in US so lahat ng mga areas is pinakita kung ano yung uh, result ng mga uh, savings and uh, uh, datas na nagather for for installing our uh, coatings. So pag makikita nyo po dito, actual energy consumption was 38 kilowatts yan hour per uh, square meter and then nagkaroon ka ng mga data na actually we can uh, give you more uh, we can show you more data about this pero as of this presentation uh, hindi namin ma-equate in terms of their hams most probably, yan po yung uh, titignan natin later on in terms of their hams, yung mga projects dito sa UAE. But uh, what I can say is in uh, Saudi Arabia, Aramco is heading on this study na lahat ng mga installations nila doon, mga housings nila doon, they already installed uh, reflective roof coating. Dahil they think na it is giving them some savings in terms of energy, in terms of electricity. But uh, we admit na wala kaming uh, data in terms of uh, uh, their hams, kung ilan yung na-save. Pero actually, this shows na meron talagang study na ginawa in different countries. And this study has been uh, conducted by uh, Dow themselves. DOW, yung Dow na company. Okay. Okay. Um, Sir Ben, yeah, thank you for the explanation. Yeah. I think for the interest of time, we need to cut short our uh, question and answer portion. For further questions, you can directly message us at pitche.uaechapter.gmail.com Important uh, reminder to all non pitche UAE members from the Philippines, Please post your full name and email address here or via the email address I just said. It's piche.uaechapter at gmail.com so that we can issue your certificate of attendance provided that you stay in a substantial amount of time here in this event. So, yan na po. If you have further questions, just message us directly and we will be happy to answer you, Sir Ben and Sir Frank. Presentation. Yeah. Okay, so thank you po. Uh, maraming salamat sa inyong uh, pakikinig. Pero Sir Ben, uh, last one last. Is it safe to assume na within a matter of two to three years, mababawi na namin yung ginastos namin sa coating? So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Actually, isa sa mga uh, reason why we are putting coatings is that to improve the life of our roofing especially dun sa mga concrete roofs na nagkakaroon ng leakage due to uh, water seepage and then yung mga roofs natin na galvanized na nagkakaroon ng rusting 
that's one of the uh, also reason na nagkakaroon tayo ng mga special coat coating sa ating roof other than saving the electricity. So okay. kung titingnan niyo sa ating bansa, instead of uh, uh, preserving the uh, life of our uh, galvanized uh, sheet, pinapalitan na natin. Whereas here, they always maintain the coating ng ating roofs. So Ayan. yun po yung isang magandang uh, 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 result din ng ating coatings. Thank you. Thank you for introducing that product. So let us now proceed to closing this event, to formally close the event. May we welcome once again our uh, remarkable president here in Piche UAE, Engineer Hilbert Libres. Thank you, Chris. All right. So uh, I'll not keep you any longer. So uh, first of all, um, I'd like to thank you, uh, to the fellows here in the Northern Emirates for their efforts in preparing for this uh, GA. And of course, for all uh, other fellows who are involved uh, in this program. And uh, also definitely would like to thank uh, fellow members and fellows from the Philippines as well, who joined us today, uh, gracing this uh, year end event. Uh, your time is uh, very important. I know it's important too. But uh, you spent, uh, you know, uh, about four hours this afternoon with us. So we're really grateful for your uh, participation. So um, I'd just like to thank everyone, uh, especially uh, uh, fellow BOD members and uh, as well as members of uh, the organization uh, for being with us uh, in this journey. Uh, you know, uh, the year 2020 is a rough year for us. Uh, however, uh, in this journey, we we had uh, a great team who worked together uh, to get through this year and uh, still accomplish uh, several activities. Um, we look forward to another uh, beautiful year, 2021, and hopefully matapos na yung pandemic. And all together, let's continue to uh, carry out these uh, worthwhile activities in order for us to achieve our vision. So our vision is to become a recognized um, outstanding uh, institution um, of globally competitive and socially relevant global Filipino chemical engineers. So the activities that uh, we are doing, uh, the webinars, um, the, the, the um, charity works, even our center stage, all of this uh, would really uh, achieve uh, the, uh, our vision. And uh, as you can see, medyo ano tayo eh, uh, multifaceted. So hindi lang technical and pati yung ating social development to promote natin. And as I repeat, center stage is one uh, activity that would really help us in our uh, personal development. And definitely is, um, in this year, it has definitely um, contributed to our uh, mental uh, health, right? So uh, again, thank you. And hopefully next year, you're still with us in this journey. Um, as we, uh, we, we still uh, expect your support to the organization, to Piche UAA, and consequently, consequently, we will be supporting the Piche National Office. Um, again, uh, and uh, maybe to formally close this one, I'd like to greet everyone a Merry Christmas and a bountiful New Year to you and to your family. So see you in our future activities uh, next year. Thank you again uh, for your time today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Engineer Hilbert, our, our dear president. And thank you. Before kayo umalis, we still have something to do. Group photo muna tayong lahat. So if, is it possible na mag-on tayo ng ating cameras para sa makikita natin mukha nyo? For our group photo session. Virtual hugs. Ayan, hello. Ayan. Okay. So, show your beautiful faces. Everyone ready? Shout out pala ulit sa aking former colleagues, uh, Grace, na ngayong Henkel na. Hi, Sir Oliver. Nice Hello. to see you here. Hi, Albert. <laughs> Hi, Sir. All right. So, okay na? Let's take a picture. Sa mga hindi mahiyain, yan. Sige, I'll give you, I'll give you three seconds or five seconds to turn on your video.
Baka yung iba nahirapan pa. Videos. Guys. Camera siya yata ang iba. Kami pang <laughs> nag-turn on ang camera sa'yo. Thank you. Thank you. Alright. Okay. Going once. Going twice. Okay. Just smile. One, smile. Two, okay. Thank you. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Good night and good afternoon. Thank you. Enjoy Thank you. the rest of the day. See you again next year. Yes. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Silver. Yes. Bye. Merry Christmas, Sir Oliver. Kumusta mo ko dyan sa mga previous colleagues? <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, sir. Ingat po. Ingat din. Bye-bye. Yan. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year. Hi, Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy New Year, Flo. Next year, sana makabisita na kami dyan. Na, na, na ulot this year, eh. Maka, <laughs> inshallah. Inshallah. All right. Okay, ingat, ingat. Janice, thank you sa ano, sa napaka masayang um, center stage. Next, ano daw, next guest natin si, ano, Becky. Gusto niya maging guest. <laughs> Wala kang audio. Bye. Doms, thank you for a job well done. Sabi sabi ng ano, sabi ng masa dito, uh, Doms, ikaw na daw yung ano. You will be the constant host daw. Hindi pwede yun. Bakit?